Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to Afterburner. I'm Bill Woodle. The NAACP compared the Trayvon Martin shooting to the lynching of Emmett Till in 1955, two young black men on their way to buy some candy being murdered for the crime of being black. Sirius XM radio host Joe Madison called the Martin shooting nothing more than a modern-day lynching. Well, he was right about that. An innocent person was tied to a tree, kind of a tree anyway, and destroyed before he could be tried, before any evidence was in. That's exactly what happened. Now, this People magazine cover summed up the case that got the guilty verdict against George Zimmerman. Because the trial isn't important, the world found him guilty. A poor black child murdered in cold blood on the way to the 7-Eleven to buy some candy. Get a good look at this magazine cover. Really soak it in. Because stories and covers like this one are evidence of one of two things on the part of the media, either criminal fraud or criminal negligence. Now, I'm not here to retry this case, but I am here to skim, and I mean skim the volumes of credible material, often in Trayvon Martin's own words, that every major news organization simply ignored in order to tell this story. Weeks and months after the event, presumably reputable news sources presented a narrative that was sold to the world as news, journalistic truth. The truth is still there. It's the journalism that's gone. So let's put aside the sentiment for a moment. We'll come back to the sentiment and look at what we know. Daniel Patrick Moynihan once remarked, you're entitled to your own opinion, but not your own facts. So where to begin? Well, you could start with these two pictures, run side by side virtually everywhere, the cherubic innocent boy and the scowling white Hispanic racist assassin. Everywhere, all the time. Well, first of all, let's start at the crime scene, because if you'd arrived there, and the police were in there about a minute after the shooting, you would not have seen this, but rather this. Trayvon Martin was not the child portrayed on the People magazine cover or in the hoodie. And you can tell that George Zimmerman has hardly assassinated a defenseless child from a distance. So what did the media know or should have known about the two principles that they sat on in order to perpetuate the story? Well, let's start with Trayvon. That happy-looking boy on the People magazine cover really came apart, especially after his father's second divorce. He became active in mixed martial arts style fighting, texting, for example, that he wanted a rematch with an opponent because, in his own words, the other guy hadn't bled enough. Witnesses testified that he was on top of Zimmerman at the time of the shooting, raining down what were called mixed martial arts style blows. We have screen grabs of Trayvon's text. They're not arable here for extreme graphic content that showed sexual aggression typical of hip hop culture in America today. Anyone reading those texts would not describe Trayvon Martin as a sweet young child. He was violent and highly sexualized. And then things start to get even more serious because a search of Trayvon's locker at school revealed a burglary tool and several pieces of stolen property, including jewelry. Incredibly, well, it would have been incredible at one time, Dade County school officials decided to list that as found property rather than stolen property. If they listed it as stolen property, a police report would have been required, which would reflect badly on black crime rates in the school system, so it was ignored. And nevertheless, Trayvon had been suspended several times for behavioral issues in the months leading up to the shooting. And then there's the issue of the candy and the iced tea. Now, we were told that Trayvon, again, an innocent child, simply went to the store to buy some candy and some iced tea. But it wasn't just any candy, and it wasn't iced tea. It was Skittles candy and a drink called Arizona Watermelon Fruit Juice Cocktail. Here's the can found at the shooting scene. The prosecution continually kept up this deception by referring to this drink as iced tea, and some have speculated that they did so to avoid the racial stereotype of black people and watermelon, but there's a much better explanation. Because if you take Arizona watermelon fruit juice cocktail, a bag of Skittles, and add simple cough syrup, you get a cheap codeine-based drink called Lean. Now, there's an entire online subculture devoted to the use of Lean, which Trayvon was familiar with. We have screen grabs of him trying to score some codeine online and instead being told he could make some fire-ass Lean using cough syrup, Skittles, and Arizona watermelon fruit juice cocktail. Seems a bit of a coincidence to me that the only two items he picked up out of the entire 7-Eleven were two-thirds of the ingredients needed to make lean. Now, additionally, we have a report from his autopsy that reveal a form of liver damage in this otherwise healthy young man just a few days short of 18 that are consistent with the kind of trauma that excessive lean usage does to an otherwise healthy liver. Now, most importantly, the online subculture refers to a number of psychological symptoms associated with the use of lean, the two most prominent being extreme physical aggression and paranoia. And we could do this for hours. So what about Zimmerman, the arch-racist who shot an innocent boy in cold blood? 
Well, he was raised alongside of two black children. Black members of his community testified he was the only person of any race or color that came up and introduced himself when they moved into the neighborhood. And when a homeless black man named Sherman Ware was knocked down by the son of a Sanford police officer, George Zimmerman, and only George Zimmerman, was so outraged by this assault that he printed up flyers and continued to do so until the son of the policeman was charged with the assault on the homeless black man. The FBI told Eric Holder's Justice Department civil rights cases against Zimmerman would fail because not only was there no evidence that he was a racist, there was a preponderance of evidence that he was not. His was not a white gated community, but a multicultural one and one in which he seems to have been pretty nearly universally liked and admired. A breakdown of the times and distances between the video recording of Trayvon in the 7-Eleven, the 911 call, and the time of the shooting showed that Trayvon was not being pursued by Zimmerman. He had had ample time to reach his destination, about four minutes to go 100 yards. Trayvon had actually gone about 30 yards in that time. He was waiting for Zimmerman. Now, maybe the lean had made him paranoid and aggressive. We don't know that speculation. But what isn't speculation? is that George Zimmerman was lying on the ground calling repeatedly for help. Why would he call for help if he was determined to kill this person? With Trayvon Martin, who was several inches taller, astride him, raining down mixed martial arts blows and telling him he was going to die that night. And when Trayvon started bashing his skull against the cement, Zimmerman thought, pretty reasonably, in my opinion, that if he didn't act, he would indeed die that night. Which is why the police did not charge him and refused to charge him until the President and Attorney General of the United States brought overwhelming political pressure in contradiction of all the evidence for a prosecution. Now remember, no one in the jury was allowed to know about the lien, the burglary, the altered mental state, the history of violence, none of it. And they acquitted George Zimmerman anyway. Those are the facts. How do we know this? Is it because of the in-depth reporting of the New York Times, the Washington Post, or the Miami Herald? No. None of them were interested in any of this. Most of this comes to light through the internet and among many dedicated researchers, especially the works of Jack Cashel at American Thinker and Sundance at the Conservative Treehouse. Now I know some of you are snorting <laughs> Conservative Treehouse, American Thinker, typical right-wing liars, but the problem with that is this is not speculation. It's Trayvon Martin in his own words, go look. It's screen grabs of his texts. It's his own Facebook posts. It's the actual autopsy report. It's sourced. It's evidence. It's called journalism. There's no journalism in places like the New York Times. These facts were available to anyone. That a few individuals could find them without resources and without pay proves that there's no journalism in places like the New York Times. You know, the definition of tragedy is something terrible that didn't have to happen. Should George Zimmerman have gotten out of his truck that night? I think of all the people in the world saying no, he would be at the top of the list. And if it weren't for the political correctness, Trayvon Martin might have gotten charged with his earlier burglaries. Would that have scared him or his parents into changing his direction? No one knows. Now, after the verdict, this image appeared. It's meant to connect Trayvon Martin with Martin Luther King. And of all the things in this wretched lynching of George Zimmerman, this is the most disgraceful. Why is there a Martin Luther King Day and not, say, a Jesse Jackson Day or an Al Sharpton Day or a Louis Farrakhan Day? Well, Dr. King is revered because he preached inclusion and nonviolence. Martin Luther King thrilled us with his I Have a Dream speech, and the entire point, not only of the speech, but his entire life's work was summed up with these lines. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will be not judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. The people that are pushing this narrative of a racist assassin and an innocent black child, the judge and prosecutors in the worst kangaroo court in living memory, did everything in their power to make certain that no one knew anything about the content of George Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin's character and only knew about one thing and one thing only, and that is the color of their skin. To connect Martin Luther King to this travesty is an outrage and it's disgusting. It's perpetrated by outrageous and disgusting people. And if all of this political power and journalistic malfeasance can be deployed to sell a tortured lie, as in the case of this little story, then what political power and journalistic malfeasance do you think might be deployed in making us buy a much larger one.